a native of Johannesburg, South Africa. That is correct. Amazing. So uh, you are the VP of Innovation Engage, which is a full service marketing agency for the digital and social age. Um, you're fascinated by new forms of communication and technology. You drive your thought leadership around innovation and serve as a pivotal edu educator of emerging technologies, consumer behavior and digital trends across the agency, both internally and externally. You're passionate about integrating technology into the classroom. Right? Correct. And, and, and you spoke at South by Southwest this year about self-education under the title autodidactic degree. The rise of the autodidactic degree. The rise degree. of the auto, Correct. sounds like a good sci-fi flick. <laughs> I'm really into sci-fi too. Well, let's start so. with that. What, what is this idea of self-education and, and the, the rise of autodidactic degree? So um, to me, when I think about innovation, one of the things that's really interesting when we look um, back historically at innovative cultures or time periods is that there are actually similarities between things like ancient Greece or um, uh, the Renaissance. Uh, the Elizabethan era. And some of those similarities are really things like exposure, exposure to other cultures, exposure to um, different products, services, really trade um, in, that, in that context. Um, the other piece is having institutions or organizations that really enable risk taking, um, which in today's culture really I would say is, is uh, you know, VCs. Um, but one of the other interesting elements is that every one of these cultures of innovation actually pioneered new forms of education. Um, so we look at ancient Greece and you see the democratization of education, uh, regardless of where you fell in the hierarchy of rank uh, of Greek culture. Um, when we look back to the Elizabethan era, we actually see that that was the first time that there was education for middle class males, which is why someone like Shakespeare actually learned how to read and write. Um, and I believe that today there's this missing element in our innovation of really thinking about how do we change the education system to really create more people who are creative problem solvers, um, who are curious, who are lifelong learners. Um, and so for me, really figuring out how do we uh, bring technology into the classroom to enable this new form of education, really self-education, uh, is key. And when I think about self-education, I think about the tools that we have available to us. So I will say I am technically a millennial. And I was at an event recently where an older woman was actually asking, um, how is it that millennials feel like they can jump from industry to industry, from job to job? And one of the, the key uh, elements is that we have access to the internet. We have access to information that just was not available to people. So if I want to go and learn how to strip a pair of brake pads, I can go online and there is a YouTube video that will walk me through it step by step. And so for me, I think that personally, I feel like there's nothing that I couldn't learn or at least take a stab at learning because of that access to information um, through the internet. And I, I feel like we should be fostering that desire to learn in our kids and in our employees, more importantly. And, and so uh, being uh, at an agency, you, you get to see inside the agency itself, but also you're working with large-scale enterprises, large-scale corporations. I mean, um, you know, some of, some of the uh, the companies that were listed here that you've worked with uh, is Verizon, Maybelline, Coca-Cola, Puma, Microsoft, 20th Century Fox, and HP. They, they all at one time were a startup, but now they're large enterprises. So, what? How does this idea of self-education? How can corporations, uh, large-scale enterprises, encourage this? Well, um, I think it starts in hiring practices. So when you look at a large corporation like Coca-Cola, for example, um, if, you're, if you don't have contacts there and you're, you're just applying off the street, um, you know, your resume goes through an automated system. And if, if a college degree isn't listed on there, you're immediately kicked out of the system, mm -hmm. regardless of whether or not you actually have the skill set to do the job. So I think the first part is reassessing how we actually hire um, and the skill sets that we're looking for. Uh, I mean, I look at the, the you know, rate of millennials who are unemployed or underemployed, who have college degrees, who spend money and time going to a university for higher education. And I don't know about you guys, but I've also hired a lot of younger millennials. And they often come to the table and um, may have hard skill sets, but they don't know how to communicate in a work environment. Um, they don't understand how to creatively problem solve. Um, you know, so I, I feel like there, there are pieces that are lacking in that higher education system that maybe should make us reassess the value of a college degree in regards to the skill sets we need in the workforce. 
Um, do, do you, I mean, like, there's, there's these badging systems uh, checking in on Foursquare. There's uh, answering questions on Quora, uh, being an editor on Wikipedia. Um, there's you know various things that people are doing on some of the through the, the digital and social media that's out there that seem to me that could be a, kind of a credential system inside these corporations as well. I mean, what kind of lessons can we learn from what's going on uh, in, in these digital platforms that could be used to the corporations as well? So we actually have been working on um, essentially a social media education system for Cisco. Uh, we're their social media agency of record, but one of the interesting things that we've done is actually create an education system for their employees around how to use social media. That does include some gamification elements around badging and status. Um, so there are definitely lessons we can learn from those types of systems to start bringing them in as part of education. But I also think not enough corporations put an emphasis on professional development. So in a rapidly changing environment where technology changes every day, platforms change every day, there's new tools every day, we are not doing our job as leaders within our organizations to actually emphasize education for our employees. We expect them to learn on their own time, but we're taking up their, their personal time with work uh, you know, already because of the connectedness that we have. So to me, do you, do you see any of these in these companies for corporate education using things like Coursera or Udacity or any of these uh, online educational systems? Um, I haven't seen it yet. I think a uh, majority of what I've seen is people who are really self-compelled to start taking those types of classes. But yes, I think that there's huge opportunity there for utilizing those platforms for internal education. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, what what kind of things would um, corporate leaders need to understand in terms of embracing what's possible now. I mean, it, it, do, you, do you see a disconnect between C-level uh, executives in these corporations and, and what the millennials are, are, are using or even, I mean, even someone, I wouldn't say generational, more of psychographic, even the, the connected, like the hyper-connected or the early adopters. Do you, are there, is there a technology gap between the C-suite and, and the rest of the company? I wouldn't say it applies across the board, but in a large capacity, yes. Um, we find that just in general knowledge uh, of these platforms and tools. Um, you know, you go to, I would say, probably 80% of, of C-level execs and you ask them, what do you think about something like Tumblr? I guarantee they're going to look at you like you're crazy, unless they're in the tech space, right? So, um, so yeah, I, th I think there's a huge disconnect there. Um, I also just think that going down to more primary education, we kind of beat the curiosity out of our kids with mm. the way that the education system is structured. Standardized testing does not encourage you to creatively problem solve. It doesn't encourage you to think. It encourages you to learn an answer and parrot it back. Um, and I think that, that has been the expectation within the corporate world as well. And one of the things we find with millennials is that they do challenge authority. They want to know why. Why is this structured this way? Why is this process this way? Why can't I do it this way? Um, those are the types of questions we often get. And there often isn't a good answer. I don't know about you guys, but I, I've been in situations where you ask the question, why is this structured this way? And no one can tell you, because it's always been this way, tends to be the answer. Um, so I, I think that there's a huge disconnect in, in technological sophistication, uh, but I think it's bigger than that. I think you know it used to be specifically, if you look at something like media, television was television for 50, 60 years. Now suddenly television is digital and it's interactive and it means we need to think about it differently. Um, but the corporations that run television and um, the, the brands that market on television haven't caught up to the shift in technology. And so uh, I think the, the world changes every day and if we're not empowering our employees to learn on a daily basis, both by giving them time and tools, then you know, you're, you're going to have a problem as, as a company. So your succinct answer to the, what is the future of work? And before we do that, what's your Twitter handle? Are you on Twitter? I am. Of course I'm on Twitter. Of course. Um, it's uh, Nicola, N-I-C-O-L-A underscore Smith 22. I know it's not particularly it's awesome. interesting. It's a good one. <laughs> 22, not just two. She's bringing the two, double deuce. Two was you're taken. You're just the deuce. She's two, the double deuce. Two was taken. Okay. Um, the future of work to me, um, we didn't touch on this, but I think is really about small, agile teams uh, of what I like to call hybrids or mutants. Um, hybrid communities, interesting. Well, I'm willing to expand hy on hy it. Hybrid individuals. Hybrid individuals. So for me, in, in my line of work, it, it does not make sense to have an individual who only has one skill set. Um, I need people who can wear multiple hats. 
As, and I think as you're talking about small teams, being able to be more fluid, be more agile, that's one of the things that helps us is that I can throw any one of my team members into a meeting and they're able to stand up and speak articulately to what we do and why we do it. Um, and we have devs on, on our team who that often is not their strong suit, but that's a requirement for me from a hiring standpoint. So. Well, Nicola, thank you very much. Thank you. I'll see, I'll see you back there. We got, we got a, a little late start, but I... Oh.